everybody. Um, welcome to another one of our pre-recorded lectures. Um, so this one is not quite about the UK cat, which is the theme of this month, um, but a little bit of a side note. I'm going to do it on life as a um, Glasgow medical student, just because this came up quite a lot in the Q&A, um, and it's not a very easy question to answer there and then, so we thought we would do a little bit of a presentation just about that. I can get the PowerPoint to work. There we go. So the Glasgow curriculum is split up into four different phases across five years. Um, so I have just finished year three, so I'm kind of in the phase four section of things. Um, and what I'm going to do is to start off the presentation, I'm going to take you through each of the different phases, um, what kind of things you learn in each of them and some of the different teaching styles that we do during each of the phases. So as much as Glasgow is, it's not a traditional preclinical and clinical degree program like a lot of other universities it can still be divided into early and late years so the early years are kind of years one and two and they are mostly based on the university campus it's divided into phase one which is the first half of first year um, and that's where they take a body system a week and you go through and briefly learn about the structure and function of that different body system um, so there's not really much in the way of pathology or disease in phase one, it really is a brief overview of each of the different body systems um, and I did find this particularly difficult I think because it's the first thing we did at university um, and trying to adapt to different teaching styles and it's completely different from high school um, so I did find that really really difficult um, but what it does is it gets everyone in the year on an even playing field so everyone's knowledge base is at the same level and gets you prepared for moving on to kind of more in-depth learning. Phase two takes up the second half of first year and all of second year and that's divided into slightly longer blocks so the blocks are they tend to be between four and six weeks long and that's where you take each of the body systems again but you go into them in much more detail um, so you spend kind of four weeks learning about a body system rather than just one week and they start to bring in little snippets of um, pathology and disease so maybe the more common diseases you might start to learn a wee bit about. Um, I found phase two actually that was probably the most straightforward part of medical school for me so far, um, especially second year when you've kind of got a grasp of what's going on. Um, you've kind of got in the way of the different learning thing, your different learning styles. Um, yeah, so that's phase two. There are lots of different teaching styles used throughout first and second year. Um, really widely really a variety of different teaching styles. So the first one that they use are labs. So you'll tend to have a couple of labs every week, whether they are anatomy or um, other like biology labs. Lectures make up a big part of the curriculum. So the Glasgow curriculum isn't heavily lecture based like some other unis, but you do have um, some lectures throughout the week. And then this thing called PBL. So PBL is, um, a teaching style used at some medical schools, not all schools will use it, but it's definitely used at Glasgow. Um, and as I said before, it's very difficult to actually explain um, without taking you through a worked example. But the most basic way I could think of putting it is you get together with your PBL group, discuss the scenario that you're given. You then decide on the set of questions to take away and research in your own time. You go away for three, you tend to get three, four days, and then you'll meet up again and discuss all the answers to your questions. So as much as this is a small group teaching, you work together, you will have a facilitator and they, their job is to make sure that you do cover everything that you're supposed to cover um, and they'll answer any questions that you might have. What I'm going to do is I put together a virtual PBA, um, uh, an example PBL scenario that I'll attach to the email and send out so you can get an idea of what it's actually set out like and how you might go about brainstorming it and coming up with questions. Um, so it's, it's just it's much easier to actually see a PBL scenario than have someone tell you about it. That PBL is one of the main teaching styles used in Glasgow for years one and two. Another thing at Glasgow are your anatomy labs. So and Glasgow is one of the medical schools that still does dissection. So in Scotland, um, Glasgow, see I wrote this down, Dundee and St Andrews still do dissection, whereas Aberdeen and Edinburgh, there are options for dissection, but as far as I could tell from having a wee look, they, um, that's not a main part of the curriculum. So Glasgow does dissection and something called prosection. 
So prosection is where the um, anatomy professors have professionally dissected specimens and preserved them and then um, you can go in and look at them rather than doing the dissection yourself. So it's quite good to get a mix of both styles. Um, I definitely found anatomy labs really, really useful when learning anatomy because it is completely different to actually be able to look at it rather than reading about it in a textbook. Um, it just it puts everything into context. So what I will do is I found a website that's got a table of how each of the different medical schools in the UK do their anatomy teaching so I'll pop that in the email so if any of you are wanting to have a look at how the different schools do the different teaching um, that will be there for you. Another thing that Glasgow do that um, as far as I'm aware is quite unique to Glasgow is something called vocational studies. So you get this in first and second year and you'll be in the same group for the whole year. So there's about I think it's nine or ten of you in a group and a tutor who will be a GP. And this is where you start to learn about your communication skills and um, practicing your examination skills. So this is where the kind of uh, more modern curriculum comes in and you're actually getting some patient interaction in your vocational studies. Um, so you learn things like history taking, which is quite a big thing and becomes really, really important further down the line and practice in normal clinical examinations. So you learn your cardio, respiratory, gastro, um, neuro and muscle MSK examinations as part of your vocational studies course. Now you also do a couple of different projects as part of that in first and second year. So in first year you do something called the life history project and the community diagnosis project and then in second year you do something called the family project. So vocational studies where it's um, aside from the kind of core scientific curriculum it definitely brings in the more integrated part of teaching. The next thing that you move on to after second year is the first half of third year called phase three. So this is a really intense 16 weeks of teaching where they focus on um, disease and pathology. So you take a different body system every week and you learn quite in depth about what can go wrong with it. So I'll put a wee slide together of the 15 weeks and the different types of teaching you get during the 15 weeks. So the first week was about genetics. The second was about um, general pathological mechanisms is what they called it. So you learned about the immune system and different disorders of the immune system. There was female uh, breast and GU pathology. Hematology was week four, so you learned about different blood cancers um, and anemias. Week four was cardiology. We had two weeks of infection microbiology, so a lot of the focus was on antibiotics and all the different mechanisms of antibiotics and when you should use them and when you shouldn't. There was respiratory, so we went through a lot of the common respiratory conditions, especially in Glasgow, so things like COPD. Endocrinology, so that there's a lot of different things in endocrinology, including diabetes. We did some dermatology, so that's um, liver and the GI tract. We did kidneys and um, urology, neurology, Rheumatology and musculoskeletal, so you learned about um, all the joints, muscles, different types of arthritis in, uh, that week. And then it finished off with the GP week where we looked at some of the common conditions that you get in the GP. So phase three for me was definitely one of the harder parts of medical school so far. It's very, very intense. Um, a lot of lectures, a lot of learning crammed into that 16 weeks. Um, and you still had one day of placement every week so you would alternate going between a GP practice and a hospital placement every week. Um, so it was just a very full on, very busy um, 16 weeks but you come out of it at the end with a lot, lot more knowledge than what you did going in and it really prepares you for starting off placement. Phase four is um, from the second half of third year right the way through to graduation and that's where you're out on the wards kind of on a more full-time basis. So I didn't get much of phase four before we were all pulled because of COVID-19 um, but I had started off placement in um, acute medicine at the Royal and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, you're based on the wards, you're seeing patients all the time, kind of taking history and practicing your examination skills and you're really just putting absolutely everything you've learned so far into practice. Um, so that's been probably one of my favourite bits of university so far. Phase four is, it's, so it's all blocks of placement. You start off doing a couple of bigger blocks of just general medicine and surgery. And then kind of the latter half of fourth year and fifth year, you do some speciality blocks 
to do things like paediatrics, obstetrics, um, and lots of other different things. As to be expected, you do have exams at medical school. They are divided into your written exams and your practical exams, which are called OSCEs. Uh, you have a written exam every year, so right the way through from first to fifth. And in first and second year, that's divided into exams at Christmas and exams in May. And traditionally, the medical school have done practical exams in second, third and fifth year. Um, but we haven't got our third year OSCE this year due to, um, again, due to COVID-19. So they're thinking that that's going to be changing again in the future. Um, what I would say about exams at medical school is they're not as hard as you probably think they would be. So long as you stay on top of things throughout the year and you prepare, um, you will be absolutely fine. It's um, not quite as scary as you, you think it would be in your head. Um, and they're definitely not crazy impossible. Like, so. You still have exams at university, they don't end when you leave high school. And what I'm going to do is just move on to talk about a couple of different things as part of the Glasgow curriculum that are maybe a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are student selected components, um, which is a five week block that you do in year two, year three and year four, where you get to um, pick what it is you want to study in a little bit more detail for five weeks. Um, so the majority of people will choose to do something kind of medical related, but you can get the option to do absolutely anything you want. So I know a lot of people last year did like language courses, um, a couple of did like sports medicine, sports science. So there's lots and lots of different things you can do as part of your SSE. So just to give you an example, what I did, so this was my project from second year. So I did it on um, cancer sciences and genetics and looked into some of the more targeted treatments for breast cancer based on uh, underlying genetics and genetic mutations. And then the one I've done for third year, which I just submitted a couple of weeks ago, um, I based it on one of the complications of COVID-19 and how you um, manage the airway and oxygenation in these kind of patients. So not quite what I'd originally planned to do for my SSE, but I still found it really, really interesting. And it gave me the opportunity to read quite a lot of research papers and things that are coming out every day with the pandemic. So I found that really, really interesting. Medical electives is um, a period of elective study that you undertake as part of your summer holiday. So a lot of universities will only give you the opportunity to do one. Um, but at Glasgow, you get the opportunity to do two. So you do one after third year and then one after fourth year. And really, this is the opportunity to go anywhere in the world and experience a medical placement that you wouldn't get to experience in Glasgow. So I had planned my third year elective for the uh, neonatal intensive care unit in Glasgow. Um, so I picked paediatrics and I picked that particular branch of paediatrics because it's not something that's taught as part of the Glasgow curriculum. Um, and paediatrics is something that I'm quite interested in. So I thought I would um, explore that in a wee bit more detail. And I'd planned to go abroad for next year, but again, I guess we'll see what happens. But um, a lot of people choose to stay and travel throughout the UK. A lot of people go abroad um, and it's just really an opportunity to explore something that you're interested in and it's not quite part of the curriculum. The other thing that's maybe a little bit different about Glasgow is the intercalated degree. So for your intercalated degree, you take a year out of doing the traditional medicine degree and you study a bachelor's of medical sciences. Um, so you would, when you graduate at the end, you'll have your medical degree and also a science degree. So this happens between years three and four. So you finish your first three years of medical school, you take a year out, you do your intercalated degree, and then you finish years four and five of medicine. Um, so this is something that I've elected to do. So I'm taking a year out next year and spending a year getting a bachelor's of clinical medicine um, focusing on critical care and perioperative medicine. So that's something that I'm quite excited about doing. Um, a lot of universities, this is compulsory, so it's built into the curriculum and it makes a six-year course altogether. But for Glasgow, the, you still have the option to do the five-year course and this intercalated degree is totally optional. So that's something I would consider looking at when you're applying and deciding whether you would like the option to do the intercalated degree or whether you want to go to a university where it is compulsory. So that's something to consider when um, you're applying to university. Aside from all of the curriculum and all of the learning, there's a lot more to university um, than just sitting in the library all the time. 
there's a lot of different medic societies. So you've got a, your year club that arrange a yearly ball. So for third year, because it's the halfway point of um, medical school, you go away for the weekends um, for the halfway ball. There's a lot of educational societies based around medicine. Uh, so Medic Insight being one of them. A um, group of students get together and put on different educational events. And there's societies like MedChair, which is uh, more of a social, um, social society. And they put on lots of events throughout the year, such as Scrubby, where the medical school gets dressed up in scrubs and travels the subway going on a bit of a pub crawl. And there's also life outside of medicine itself. Um, so I'm part of the Glasgow Student Dance Company, so that's a picture of us at the end of our annual show. Um, and that's just a wee break away from medicine itself. And there's so many different things you can do at university, um, aside from medicine as well. So it's been really great to get involved in that too. So that's a picture of us performing at um, a Glasgow Uni event. That's a wee picture of us when we travelled down to a competition in Liverpool that we actually won with that dance. And then that's a picture of us going to the after party. Um, so it's been really great. I really enjoy that because you meet a lot of people that aren't maybe from medicine as well. Um, so you make a lot of other friends, which is great. And another thing I get asked quite a lot is whether to move out or stay at home. Um, so I stay at home and I still stay at home. For me, Glasgow is commutable, so I get the train every day. Um, and it's just, it saved me a lot of money for one thing. And I also like the support of being at home and having my friends from back home and my family around. Um, so it's been a good balance for me. But I know a lot of people have a completely different experience if you move out and move into halls. Um, you get a new experience, the uni life, in a kind of more traditional sense. I don't feel like I've missed out too much by not being at home. You can always find somebody's flat to crash at for the night if you're on a night out. Um, I don't really feel like it's held me back. But I know a lot of people have really enjoyed the independence that you get from moving out. Um, uh, and wouldn't have wanted to stay at home. So it's really, uh, it's a personal decision. Um, and if anybody wants any more information on that, um, feel free to send us an email and I can try and find someone that has, that did move out in first year to give you a wee bit of advice on maybe what they would do differently. Um, yeah, and that brings us to the end of my wee talk on the Glasgow curriculum. There's normally a time that I would ask if anyone has any questions, but obviously can't ask questions because I'm recording this pre-recorded. Um, but if anyone does have any questions about the Glasgow curriculum, feel free to send us a wee email and I'll try and get back to you on that. Um, but thanks very much for listening.